Plaza is passing by, it is permissible to stand up for it. And number 12, it is recommended that those carrying the janaza should make wudu afterwards. That means not for the janaza itself, after performing. We forgot to say that, that it is recommended for those who wash the body, okay, to take a ghusl, but you don't have to, okay? So the same thing, understand that the person that carries the janaza uh, I have to double check this. My memory doesn't help me about number 12, so I have to double it to check it, inshallah, after the, after the session, inshallah. Now I'm telling you about transportation and what's right, what's wrong. As for the transportation, doesn't matter how. But the main thing is that be comfortable, not to be shaking the body, not to imitate the kuffar. We, you may use the closed box or the open box, doesn't matter. The, same, the, the issue is not to be any kind of imitation, not to be any kind of wasting money, buying a special box, okay? Whatever means that is available to carry, okay? But of course, that the bottom one is the more traditional that is used or known. So it seems that we're approaching a new section here concerning the prayer, the Janaza prayer, which is also a community duty. That means it has to be part of the community to fulfill this duty towards the Muslim brother or sister who pass away. And this for, for us to receive the reward and also for us to give them the dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them and give forgiveness and to replace them with a better family, better home, all these things. That's Pictures that you see here it shows us where it's supposed to be the Imam standing from the deceased person, assuming that we have more than one person in the same time. Uh, different from man to woman? Yes. And with the man that you're going to be in the middle of the man, the woman that you're going, to, can you see the word here? The top one is the woman. A woman, and after this, I think a child. And yeah. after this... I can't see those. Okay. The, the last one is the man. Is a man. You see the imam, this is the point that you see all the way down. I don't know how I can show it to you here. But you see that there is rows here, three rows and one in the front. This is supposed to be the imam. So if, you, if it's a man will be close towards the head. If it's a woman, will be close to the middle of the body. Same thing if the child, boy, or girl. But if they are mixed, like we see in the haram case, that a lot of hujjaj, a lot of people making umrah, and you always find janazah there, this will be the order and where the imam will be standing, okay? So they move the body itself because the imam could not be move from one side to one side, he will be center, he will be there, you understand, which will be the middle of the woman, will be the head of the man. So this is the arrangement that we see in this picture. General guidelines for Salatul Janazah. Number one, women can participate in Salatul Janazah. This is permissible, okay? They are not required to go, but if a woman attends the Janazah, it's no harm as long as they follow the Islamic rulings concerning their participation, their clothes, and these things. Number two, the more people who pray, the better. And the reward for making dua for the diseased person. Number three, it is recommended to make at least three rows of at least two people each. Okay. This if you don't have many people, so now we make three rows.
Number four, if there, are, if there are only two people, the person stands behind the Imam. Number five, mass funeral prayer is permissible, though it is preferable to pray for each deceased person individually. This I don't know about the proof about it. Is it something from a thick point or is something that the Sunnah, I may have to check this later on. Number six. Six, it is preferable to pray outside of the masjid in a designated spot. This is the sunnah. It's not preferable, but it's acceptable any place. But the Prophet ﷺ usually made the salah, janazah, in the musalla. And the musalla is outside of the mosque where it's designated for the funeral prayer, Eid prayer, okay? But if it's raining or it's not available, you can do it in the mosque. Seven, it is permissible to pray in the masjid. Okay. Eight, no funeral prayers in the graveyard. All right. No funeral prayer as congregation. But if somebody miss the janazah prayer, it can go there and make the janazah prayer as individual on the person. And the Prophet Sallallahu had did this uh, on the woman that you used to clean up the mosque during his time. Number nine, the imam stands behind the head of a deceased man or behind the middle of a deceased woman. Ten, it is permissible to do four to nine takbirs. Uh, as for the takbir, the normal case is four takbir, okay? But in some of the sahaba, that the Prophet Sallallahu made more than four takbir due to their rank or to their position in Al-Islam. So if somebody that great, not great means that he was a king or a president, no. Great in the deen. A person who was doing a lot for the deen, helping the Muslim, he can make more than four takbir. Eleven, lift hands with each takbir. 12, place right hand over left hand on chest. 13, what to say after each takbir, silently. First, takbir, al-fatiha plus any surah. I don't know about uh, saying surah after the fatiha. We have to double check these things, okay? Second takbir, salah on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which you call durood, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, same way like you say in tashahud or any way that you know. Third takbir, dua. Fourth takbir, dua. And after this, it is limb to the right or the right and the left. Fourteen, conclude the salatul janaza with salam. That means you turn to the right and say assalamu alaikum. Say the salam lightly, not loudly. Do not pray Salatul Janazah during the following times, sunrise, noon, sunset. Same thing about any other prayer, you understand, unless it has a reason. 17, it is permissible to pray Salatul Janazah in absentia if no one prayed over the deceased Muslim. That if somebody die in non-Islamic country and there's no Muslim community there, and we got to know later on that he died. So now we can gather the people and make called Salat al-Ghaib. But we don't know that Salat al-Ghaib to be done on a person who that people already perform a prayer on him. The Salat al-Janaza, uh, Salat al-Ghaib, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa performed it on the Najashi, the king of Abyssinian, the one who welcomed the Muslims when they make the first migration. And he had took shahada, became Muslim, but did not expose himself to the people, you understand, of his religion, fear out of that they may rebellions against him or whatever it is, but he became Muslim and the Prophet Sallallahu told the Sahaba that he'd been informed that the Najashi had passed away and he gathered them and made the janazah 
in, on his behalf. 18, an overview of the different cases of janazah. If uh, the deceased is a Muslim, it is obligatory. We only pray on Muslims. We don't make funeral prayer for non-Muslims. A sinful Muslim, obligatory. Doesn't matter what kind of sins that he's committing. Okay? If he, even if he die and the bottle of wine in his hand. Okay? People who commit suicide, still you pray on them. Okay? You don't say, okay, Allah says, you understand, whosoever do this, and this is not your business what Allah said. But still a Muslim, he's a Muslim sinner, and for you to make janazah on him. Muslim whose janazah was not prayed, janazah in absentia. We Sh talk about this already. Shaheed recommended. Kids, optional. Baby, optional. Less than four months. Miscarriage, prohibited. Non-Muslims, prohibited. Why we say optionally? Because the Prophet sallallahu he, as example, he did not pray on his uh, son Ibrahim when he passed away. Okay? Non-Muslim, okay, here is the point that I talk about it in the beginning came, that you could not pray on non-Muslims. Again, I think that this is general guidelines for Salat al janazah we talk about it. And you see the Imam supposed to be here in the front. The Muslims behind him, a minimum of three lines. He's going to be standing even to the head of the man, the middle of the woman, and they line them in front of them. Again, the same. There is no bowing down in the prayers. There is no prostration. It's for takbirat. And they're going to be the deceased person and people between the imam and the qibla. Like the laptop in front of me, if this is the qibla like this, so the person will be in front of the imam, okay? And the imam behind him and the musallim behind the imam. We'll go to another uh, section, inshallah, Salat al Janaza. Salat al Janaza. Number five, the Imam raises his hands with the first takbir. The people behind him follow him in this. Allahu Akbar. Okay. But in the right on the left is the same way like in his salat. And after this, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Okay. And after this, Allahu Akbar. Second time. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim to the end. And after this, Raise your hand again, and you say the dua, Allahumma, see the salah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the tashahud, uh, dua for the diseased person. You may follow what is there, or you can say as much as that you know, Allahumma gfirlah, Allahumma arham, Allahumma gsilum min khataya bil ma'u wa thalju al barad, Allahumma Allahumma abdillu daran khayran min dari, ahlan khayran min ahli, okay? Whatever that you know, and this is one of the, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, and one of the sahaba is telling us about what he heard and memorized it from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's saying, Allahumma aghfir lah, warham, wa'afihi wa'fu'an, akrim nuzala, wa wasa' man khalahu, واغسله بالماء والثلج والبرد ونقي من الخطاء كما نقيت الثوب الأبيض من الدنس وابدله دارا خيرا من داره وأهلا خيرا من أهله وزوجا خيرا من زوجه وادخله الجنة وعذه من عذاب القبر أو من عذاب النار to such a degree that the narrator of the hadith is say I wish that I was the deceased person because the dua of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم that he had made for this person. You want to say? No, the dua in English, O oh Allah, pardon him, have mercy on him, give him well-being and forgive him, honor his arrival, widen his entry, wash him with water and ice and hail, <coughs> cleanse him from his sins as a white dress would be cleansed from dirt, 
We place for him a house better than his, a family better than his, a spouse better than his. Let him into Jannah and shelter him from the punishment of the grave and the punishment of the fire. 11. The Imam makes the fourth takbir. Sincere dua from the Sunnah is made for the deceased. Steps 11 and 12 are repeated if the Imam chooses to make additional takbirs. Okay, after he makes the dua for the deceased person, okay, he raise your hand again, Allahu Akbar, Allahumma la taftinna ba'da wa la tahrimna ajra, or general dua for the Muslims, and after this, assalamu alaikum to the right, and this will end the janaza prayer. Now we'll go to another uh, section, inshallah, concerning uh, the burial, guidelines. General guidelines for burial. Number one, everyone should be buried. Okay. This is something general. Muslim or non-Muslim, you give him this. If you have a relative that non-Muslim and he die and nobody is there to bury him, you can go and do this. Okay. But you don't participate in any session of worship or prayer or anything like this. And if I'm not mistaken that uh, Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu when his father died, he went and asked the Prophet sallallahu to bury his father and the Prophet permitted him to do so. Number two, Muslims and non-Muslims should be buried in separate graveyards. Three, the shaheed of the battlefield is buried where killed. Let's go to number two again and hear it again. Number two, Muslims and non-Muslims should be buried in separate graveyards. Okay. Renting, you understand, uh, or taking one acre from their land. No, Muslims, they... They spend money for everything. So why they could not get their own graveyard? There's never been the tradition of the Muslims to be bury somebody among the non-Muslims. Number three, the shaheed of the battlefield is buried where killed. Everyone else must be buried in a graveyard. Four, burial is permissible during the following, is impermissible during the following times, except if necessary. Sunrise, noon, sunset. Five, it is permissible to have a niche lahid in the grave. You call it niche or niche? I don't know. Okay. Anyway, this is what I was going to talk to you about, inshallah, about the different burial of Muslims. But I think we're going to have a picture later on to show you what, but we call it lahd, okay? Lahd means like deviation or going out of the normal way. Naam? Yes. We're going to see the picture, inshallah, we're going to explain it. Number six, only the men lower the deceased into the grave. This is not a job of women, okay? This is not the job of women, all right, for them to be jump, uh, going down five feet and holding a body, and you understand? So they don't to participate in this. Seven relatives and guardians should lower the body into the grave. If possible, it is permissible for the following relatives to bury in the order of preference given. And this actually in, in, in a time that there is no enough room or there is no graves enough, you understand? Otherwise, that everybody, like we said, the normal case, that everybody be buried in one grave. Number nine, put the deceased in the grave starting on the end where the feet will be. Okay, so... The person, when you lower the person to the grave, you come with the head first, let's say that the table and I'm sitting here, this is the grave. So this is the qibla. This is where is the head going to be? 
This is the foot going to be. So we lower the body coming like this from here, going down. You will have two or three people down in the grave itself, and you have other people who assist from the surface of the ground, taking the body and pass it to each other and lower it, starting from the left side of the grave where is the feet of the deceased person going to be. Is this understood? So you lower it down like this. So it's not the head or the feet facing the Qibla? The head and the body and the feet will be facing the Qibla. But first we're saying how we're going to load to bring the body in. Okay? So you bring with the head first and the feet comes later. From the side, if this is the Qibla, we're facing like this. So we take the head and we'll bring it down. Like this. After he lays the person down, now we're going to show how is the body going to be. Number 10, no one who is intimate the night before may enter the grave. Okay. So the person who have a relationship with his wife and why, I don't know why, we practice this according to the practice of the Prophet ﷺ. And we do it and Without asking why, we don't, I don't know. But this is the sunnah, the practice. Number 11. 11, the deceased person should face the qibla laying on his or her right side. Okay. Let's see if we have something here. No, the picture is not here yet. But we're going to have the picture to show this, inshallah. General guidelines for burial. 12, the person who puts the deceased in the grave says... Bismillahi wa ala millati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the name of Allah and upon the religion of the Messenger of Allah, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. 13. Those watching from above can say, In the name of Allah and upon the religion of the Messenger of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. 14. After putting the body in the grave, the people around the grave may throw three handfuls of dirt into the grave on the side of the head. 15. Many people say, from it we created you, and to it we will return you, and from it we will raise you again at the time of putting the body in the grave. This is not permissible. So this is a form of bid'ah. And also from the bid'ah that you will know about that people will be talqeen al mayyid All right? When the angels understand, <coughs> ask you who's your Lord, you say this, such and such. When they ask you this, say this to them. So this part of the tradition that the people who said what? Minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. Those people who are participating. But is nothing about this from the Sunnah. 16. After the burial, observe the following. Raise the filled up grave above the earth level by the span of a hand width. He, there is a point here is missing. After we lay down the body, the lahd, we close the lahd before we close the grave. And I'm going to show you the picture. Let's see how far the picture. Okay, it's coming here. <coughs> that we close the lahd. The lahd is a niche to the side. So you got bricks to close it. Okay? And you seal it. The pile of raised dirt should be in the form of a convex shape. That something like you may call it uh, a hum, okay? Mount. Huh? Mount. Mount. Yeah, okay. This is yeah mountain of, but it's not not to go raise it more than one hand span. And this for purpose for people to know that there is somebody here, because the grave of the Muslim is respected. You don't sit in it. You don't walk in it. Okay. Next. It is permissible to mark the grave with a stone or marker to identify the grave. You can do so, but not a special stone. Does not have to be. Okay? For putting a special stone 
spending money in it is not acceptable. Put in the stone and put in the name where he born, what degree he got, what day he born and what day, all these things from the practice of the non-Muslim. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had happened one case only, if I'm not mistaken, that Uthman ibn Ma'adhun, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had marked his grave for the family to be buried there, okay? But in general, is not. If the person is buried, one should not say loudly, La ilaha illallah. After the burial, it is permissible once in a while to sit and remind the people of what happens after death. Actually, this... خلاص يا أختي خلصتوا جزاكم الله خير that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم while the grave was prepared he sat and the Sahaba around them and he gave them a reminder okay not after burying the person make a session and give mawaidah and things like this it happened that one time it happened, okay, if we want to take this as a reminder for the people, it's fine, but not to be a part of a, what we're supposed to be doing for every janazah. 17, it is permissible to exhume a body if necessary. 18, it is what not... Is, what is this? It is permissible to exhume. What's to exhume? Do you know what this Anybody word is? Anybody know what exome means? <laughs> huh? To remove the body. Oh, okay, okay, yes, 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 yes. And in a case that we do not have enough room for burial, okay? And this grave been used before that you can take what remaining from the bones of this person and move it to the side and use their grave again. But nowadays we have plenty of lands to do things like, okay? But if anything happened that is still acceptable and it has to be done in a respectable way. 18, <clears throat> it is not permissible to pre-dig your grave. Some people out of uh, preparing themselves for death or to be more conscious about death, they go themselves and dig or ask somebody to dig the grave for them while they're still alive. This is not from the Sunnah. Now let's look here to the right side of the picture of me. I don't know, it's supposed to be maybe your, your left side there. This is a grave already been uh, filled. And the other one shows you the grave, how it's supposed to be digged. There is some mistake here about the diagram. If you look to the word top of the grave, can you see it? Anybody see it? Is it clear there? Okay, go down and you found the lahd, L-A-H-D. Do you see it? Yeah. This niche <coughs> need to be taken down to the bottom of the grave the, the ground level, to, the to be equal with the ground. So basically, you're going to dig the grave straight. Okay. And this will be the bottom of the grave as example. Okay? We are here on the ground. Do you see me? This is the ground. We're going to dig the grave. Go down all the way. 
four, five feet down. When you reach here in the bottom, you will come towards the Qibla, and you're going to dig inside this wall. Enough for the body to be put inside. So that means will look like this. I don't know if something... Can you see this? Okay. Do you see this draw like a draw in the closet? You have the closet and you have a draw inside. So this is the wall of the grave. This is the way... How is the Qibla? This is the ground level, if you hold it, Muhammad This is the top. This is the top. And this is the wall facing the Qibla. I went all the way down, and after this I came here, and I dug about maybe one feet or feet and a half inside. You got it? Anybody see the picture? You see how the side looks like? How's, how to look? Now, can I get your pen, please? This is the body. This is the body. The body will be put inside here. Exactly will be like this here. So you got the ground here. You have the dead body here. And you have the wall here. This niche, this inside, they call it lahd. As the Prophet وسلم, said, Allahdu lana. Lahd is for the Muslims. Washiqu lahum. Shiq will be like this. You got the two walls, the two walls of the grave, okay? And you come here in the middle <coughs> of the grave, and you will dig down, like what you did to the side, lah, but you're going to dig it in the middle of the grave, you understand? So now when we put the body, the body will be in the middle, and the niche down here. Okay? And you close it here. So this shock, the split in the middle, this for the non-Muslim. The lah to the side facing the Qibla is for the Muslim. You got this? Now, do you see? No, I could not. If I do this, I'm no. not going to see this. Okay? No. South Carolina, we don't use the box. Here in Connecticut, we have to use the box. The, you go by the rules. If you don't have a choice, you have to go by the rules. Okay? <laughs> Do you see here? I, I will show you the system. You see the left here? So now after we put the dead person here, now we're going to close this area here with a brick. You put it beside each other and you cover it so no snakes, no anything, you understand? Right, so anything will come to the body. You got it? Is it needed for me to explain it there or you understand? Nobody? Okay. Now the brother is saying that about it is requirement or a must that you have a box. Like I said, you have to know about your state or your city. In South Carolina, alhamdulillah, we still have this relaxation of the law. We have our own graveyard. We do whatever we want. We shroud the person with no casket, nothing, and we put it in the ground, and this is it. Okay? So you have to know about the rules that re 
apply to your place. It was only recently. Hmm? It was recently, but before we used to do that. Yeah, yeah, you see, Muslims, I, like I said yesterday, uh, no, this morning about da'wah, there is many things so relaxed to us here that we don't even have it back home. And we should take advantage of it because you never know. If we are not using these things, Allah will make this thing disappear, be taken away from us. But if Muslims get united together because, and they go address the, their senator or what the local area, they can make a change. Because the Jews and the Christians, they have their own rules, and in many cases, it's acceptable. I'm here to tell you what is the sunnah, and after this you have to see how things will work in your area. But I'm talking about if you live in, in a place that allow you to do this, this is what you should do. Okay? So now, at least when you read a book and say, and you don't know what is lah, so you got the idea. Okay? Again, this is what explained to you about how to... Yeah, let me go back here. This draw, let me call it a draw, like a closet, and you have a draw. This niche that we call it lah, that we lay down the dead person on his right side, facing the qibla. So the feet, the stomach, the head, everything is facing the qibla. You know what? If we turn this to the side, this will be almost look like a lahn. So you take the person and you put him here, he will be inside. And you come here, since I didn't come to the other side, and you close this, because this is the wall of the grave. And you will close this with bricks, close the lahn, so no any foreigner elements will come to the body, okay? And here, the person will be laying down on the right side facing the Qibla. So the feet, the stomach, the head, the face, everything will be there. Did we talk about shrouding? Did we discuss shrouding? Okay, it seems that there is something that missing about tying the person, but we come to it, inshallah. Let's go to the next one. How are you going to load the deceased person to the grave? You go with the head first, and the feet will be after, and you're going to be going the head down, and this is the side here. This is the side of the grave where you're loading the man or the woman. Okay, is this clear? Okay. You call it the foot of the grave. Now this is telling you about burying more than one person. This is emergency cases. If we don't have it, we don't use it. Okay? You only put one person, bare grave, and you close the grave, and this is it. Later on, five years, whatever it is, the we can use the same grave again, okay? That you take the bones, the remaining, and you put it to the side, and you put another person, okay? But this, in case of battlefield, and a lot of people dying, you can put more than one person, and you put the first, the person who more memorization of the Quran, and like this, okay? Everybody will be facing the Qibla. Okay, we now will go about ta'ziyah, condolence, things which should happen between the family and relatives and friends after the person died and been buried, all right? And let me remind myself as well as my brothers and sisters here with hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when the person died, okay, followed by, he be followed, he or she, by three things his property, his family, and his deed. 
two will come back and one will remain. The property and the family go back and what remain with you is your good deed. Sure. So let's try to focus more and be concerned about what's going to remain with us in the grave. All right, Fadal. General guidelines for condolences. Number one, encourage relatives of the deceased to be patient by mentioning the reward of patience and making dua for the deceased. Two, console with what will comfort the people. Three, one can give condolences even after three days. Four, make food for the family of the deceased. Now you see the opposite nowadays, they what? The people go to give their condolence and the family people, the deceased people, they're making the coffee, making the tea, making them the... No, we're supposed to because they said grieving over the person, they don't care for food. We should be supporting to them in time like this by cooking and they try to feed them. Five, some things to avoid. A, gathering for condolence in a home, a graveyard, a masjid. This is not from the sunnah. If you meet the family, you understand, you give them the condolence and this is it. But you don't make a special gathering for these things. B, relatives of the deceased preparing food for the visitors. Six, pass your hand over the head of the orphan and be generous to him or her. Those who need more support, understand, try to give them the support, like the wife or the husband or the children, and especially in case of orphan. I have a question. In regards to number five, part, part B, where you're asking about food, now, if you want to treat you know, the people that came, you're saying that's not allowed? If the people what? He's asking about the feeding. Uh, the, the family of the dead person if they want to feed the people who are coming to visit is that not allowed? First of all there is no visits there is no gathering for condolence this is not the sunnah okay number two that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said Isna'u ala ja'far ta'aman do for the family of ja'far food so we don't the opposite we need to follow the sunnah at least be aware about what is the sunnah. I'm not saying that eating the food would be haram. <clears throat> Seven. <clears throat> Seven, the deceased benefits from the following deeds. A, a Muslim's dua for him, fasting, taking care of the debts of the deceased, good deeds of the children of the deceased, what the deceased left behind, knowledge, running charities, pious children. Okay, about the fasting... I don't know about this unless that, that your mother or your father, this is a different case, and that they have a obligatory fast that means a promise that had made vow and they did not fulfill it. If they die, you understand, without fasting Ramadan, and they did not get out of this illness, or the feeding or anything like, but you understand for me, for my uncle, I'm going to fast every Monday and Thursday, or for my sister, or for my brother, this is not, we don't know about this in Islam. That a human being doesn't get anything unless he did it himself. The ibadat that is done is only beneficial for the person. Only in one case that the person that his children doing for their father or their mother. Other than this case is not uh, acceptable. About useful knowledge will benefit you after, as long as the people are still using it, okay? Like you can see the Imam al-Bukhari, rahmatullah alayhi, collected Sahih al-Bukhari, and we're still using this hadith. This is something that will benefit Continuous charity, that you bought a charity for things to continue, to be continued in use. The rug, building a mosque, anything beneficial for the people, uh, water fountain for people to drink. This is called continuous sadaqa jariya.
graveyard, visitation, it is permissible to visit male or female as long as he did not commit any wrong or sin in the way how you visit him or the way how you go about it. The Prophet is saying, ألا إني كنت قد نهيتكم عن زيارة القبور ألا فزوروها فإنها تذكركم بالأخرة أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم Indeed I had forbid you before previously about visiting the graves and what now you can visit it because it gives you reminder about death and about the hereafter and the scholars in general they say that the khitab in Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم is for general for male and female. But if a woman going to be going there and putting dirt over her head, crying and weeping and get emotion and go there with tabarruj, not the proper dress code and mixing with men, we said to her, no, because you committing sin, you are not benefit by your visit. What is supposed to say there? Fadal. Graveyard etiquette number one. Visit the grave to remind yourself of the hereafter and pray for the deceased. So when you go to visit a grave with all this marble and writing and flowers and flags and all this uh, grass cut and uh, landscaping, what's going to... <laughs> you say, wow, man, I wish I could live here. Huh? It looks nice here. Yeah. So it defeated the purpose. All right. Two, it is permissible for women to visit the graves, but not a lot. All right. Three, it is permissible to visit the graves of non-Muslims. For purpose of? Remembering death. Not because you're going to give them dua or give them greeting. And even the Prophet ﷺ told us, إِذَا مَرَرْتَ بِقَبْرِ كَافِرٍ فَبَشِّرْهُ بِالنَّارِ if you pass by a grave of a kafir, give him the glad tidings of hellfire. Abshiru bin nar. So it's nothing, you understand? But we have enough grave. But if you're looking for the reminder, but when you go to the graveyard of the kafir, applying to these rules, it doesn't work. All these flowers and all these candles and all this landscaping and... For? Dua while visiting the graveyards. Peace be upon you all, O inhabitants of the graves, amongst the believers and the Muslims. Verily, we will, Allah willing, be united with you. We ask Allah for well-being for us and you. And this to be said in Arabic, if you could not, at least say, Assalamu alaikum. Ahl al-Diyar min al-Muslimin wal mu'mineen Assalamu ala ahl al-Diyar min al-Muslimin wal mu'mineen Okay? Five, reading the Qur'an at the grave is not permissible. Okay. By yourself or hiring a reciter like they do in some countries. Six, it is permissible to lift one's hand in dua at the grave. Seven, face the qibla for the dua, not the grave. Eight, when passing by the grave of a kafir, no salams, no duas. Nine, no need to put flowers, roses, or plants at the grave. I don't like the word no, no need. You could, not, you could not do this, you understand? So my English is not that good. So when I read the word no need, that, but it's okay to do it. Is it? No. Anybody? Yeah. yeah, how many times did the prophet do this? Yeah, yeah I'm, it's good. Alhamdulillah, Zakallah khair. But who here receiving the revelation from, from us? No one. The Prophet been informed that this person is punished in the grave. So he put a green plant on him, hoping that Allah will enlighten his punishment as long as it's still green. But how do you know if this person in that grave is punished or reward for you to do something like this so it doesn't apply? All right? 
We see a traffic light here, it says at almost three o'clock, or oh, common mistakes. Oh, this is need a session by itself. Do you need a break or continue? Continue. Continue, huh? Okay. This is the main hadith applied to Janazah or other than Janazah, and I hope that everybody pay attention to it. Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa min, fahuwa rad. Whosoever introduce, invent, add into this matter, this affair, this religion, anything is not part of it. What means is not part of it? That means it's not been taught by Allah or His Messenger will be rejected, will be rejected. Tell me, but brother, I'm saying Salah al-Rasul. What's wrong with Salah al-Rasul? I say, is nothing wrong with sending peace and the blessing of the Prophet, but can you say, Samia Allahu liman hamida Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad? Or instead of Subhana Rabbi al-Azim, say, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, Samia Allahu liman hamida. What do you think about this? Anybody taking a nap? Anybody agree? No. Can we do this? No. What's wrong with Quran? Quran is good. <coughs> yes, Quran is good, but this is not the place for Quran. Sayyidina Muhammad did not do it. Alayhi Sayyidina yes. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't do it. This is it. Khalas. Like you say, khalas. Bas. Especially in Salah. No, especially in anything in the deen. Uh, the Prophet... Uh, 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 uh. No, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let, let's see what the hadith is saying in Arabic. Man ahdatha fi, oh, it says amrina, or oh, didn't say salah, ma laysa min. What about zakah? What about hajj? What about death? What about marriage? Amrina, our affairs, our matter. Can we agree? No, what the Prophet said, Amrina. Uh, the, the meaning which you said, uh, we focus on Muhammad. Alayhi salatu. Good. All, all the things which related to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. But, uh, what is worship? One second. No, no, no. It's good. It's good. It's benefit. Okay. No. Do you, know, do you mind for me to tell you? قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَا وَمَمَاتِي So there is nothing in the Muslim life that has nothing to do with the deen. If the deen did not say anything about it, do it in whatever way you want. But if the Prophet ﷺ did not do it, we are not going to do it. He said, say my prayer. My sacrifice, my daily life, everything in my daily life, and even my death is for Allah, by Allah. Otherwise, that I'm smarter than the Prophet, because I got to know something the Prophet didn't do it. They didn't know it. Not all the time. Omar ibn al-Khattab <laughs> changed the tarawih from 8 or 11 rak'at to 20. And in, uh, okay, Amar, let's hold. The, Amar, okay, but one one thing, one thing is enough. One one thing, and we can go to the second. First of all, prove with authentic narration that Omar did this. We heard it, but can somebody say that Omar did this? No way. No authentic. Here, my hundred dollars that might take it to back to Colombia, lawful for you if you bring this. <laughs> No, this is not bad. If you pay and I pay, this is betting. Anyway, listen. Anything in the matter of the deed, anything in matter of the deed, because somebody say, oh, the prophet didn't ride a bike or drive a car. He say, man ahdatha fi amrina, in our religion. Does our religion talk about salah? Yes. Talk about janazah? Yes. Talk about wedding, yes. So anything that related to how Allah is saying do it, you could not add or delete. Can we agree about this? Now we can take it individual case one by one, one by one. As example, one of the things that the people say Omar did. Can you prove that Omar did? No, you could not. 
and you can ask any scholar to prove that Umar ibn al-Khattab changed Taraweeh from 8 to 11. Let's say, let's say, Jadalan kama yaqulun, that Umar did. Watch. You have the Prophet and you have the companion. Which one will know better? Allah, is, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, wa khayru al-huda, huda Muhammad. So why you live the best and go for what is good? Must be something wrong now. If somebody selling you this for $5 and the same brand, the same thing, I'm going to give it to you for $10. Why am I going to spend $10? If $5, he sell it for a dollar. The prophet has the best. Can you agree about this? Omar doesn't have the best. It can be good, maybe, but why, what make you jump from the best to the lowest? Why? Let's continue in the janaza before somebody drop dead here. <laughs> All right, let's go. Common mistakes. We will talk more in details, inshallah. Thank you for your patience. Can you say it in English? Common mistakes, the Prophet wasallam said, Whoever introduces into this matter of ours that which is not from it, then it is rejected. Okay. Arrival of death. Mistakes. Number one, putting the mushaf near his or her head. What do you think about this? Can we put the mushaf? No. Why not? Okay. Or somebody said, but the Prophet didn't have mushaf in his time. I agree with you, did not have a collective book like this. But in time of Osman, they have, is it? But did we hear about somebody did this from the Sahaba? You have to say Quran, authentic Sunnah, and the understanding of the Sahaba. Because the Prophet said, خَيْرٌ نَاسِ كَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ The best people to understand this Islam and to practice this deen is the Sahaba. After this, the tabi'in, and after this, the tabi'i tabi'in. So if we did not have anybody through the three generation did something like what we want to do today, it's better to leave it alone. Number two. Number two, believing that the devils come to him in the form of his parents and invite him to disbelief. Okay. Grieving and mourning, mistakes. Section one, dealing with the body. Number one, believing that the deceased soul roams about the place of death. <coughs> Two, lighting a candle all night close to the deceased, no candlelight vigils. Three, putting weights on the deceased belly to prevent its swelling. Four, tying the deceased thighs together to prevent any excrements from exiting. Five, putting a green branch in the room with the deceased body. Six, reading the Qur'an loudly over the body until it is washed. Seven, putting... Why, why is he saying the word loudly? I don't see what a loudly or secretly, you understand? There is nothing to say to read the Qur'an when the person waiting for the washing. Seven? Seven, putting dust in the deceased's eyes and saying nothing kills the son of Adam's eyes except dust. Eight, placing a mushaf on the deceased chest or near him. Section two, announcement of death. One, announcing the death from the highest minarets. Two, announcing the death in newspapers or by pasting a sheet of na'i to the doors of houses and stores. Morning, na'i, does that mean to announce the his? Three, describing a deceased by Al Marhum, the one who has been granted mercy, or Al Maghfur Lah, the one who has been forgiven, they should instead ask Allah to grant him mercy and forgiveness. Because we don't know what Allah is going to deal with the person, okay? We see the appearance, but we don't know what's in the hearts of the people. So we say Al Maghfur Lah, the man that's been forgiven, or the Shaheed, or whatever it is, we leave this up to Allah. <coughs> For referring to the deceased as Shaheed. Section three, grieving and mourning. Number one, abstention from any person who witnesses the occurrence of death from doing any work for seven days. Two, abstention from eating until the deceased is buried. 
Three, the families weeping with every lunch and dinner. Four, mourning for a full year, during which the women avoid using henna and wearing nice clothes or jewelry. Five, turning carpets and rugs upside down and covering mirrors and chandeliers. I'm sure that some of these things you never heard about it, but in different cultures they do different things, okay? So in case that anybody involved in it or know back home they do these things, you have to know that these things is not from Islam. Six, abstinence from eating certain lavish types of food during the morning period such as fish, grilled meat, liver, and so on. Seven, hanging the deceased picture, putting black ribbons around it, talking to it, and so on. Eight, hiring professional whalers. And also this you understand about hanging the pictures in, in general. You know, this forbidden in Islam, okay? And the Prophet Sallallahu said that al malaika la tadkhul bayt fi kalb aw surah. Angels, they don't enter the house that has a, a picture or a dog. Eight, hiring professional whalers to encourage the people to cry by reciting poetry and other things that raise their emotions. Nine, hiring reciters or running tape recorders with Quranic recitation. This became a big fashion, you understand, in some Islamic countries. And you have the reciter. <coughs> he has an office and the secretary and appointments. And it depends who the reciter is going to be, the price is high, and all these things. Ten, wearing specific clothes or colors, like black for the morning. <coughs> Section four, condolences. Number one, making it a regular counseling practice, consoling practice to shake the hands of the deceased family members, hug or kiss them. Two, the family members forming a line near the grave for receiving condolences. Three, gathering in a specific place, the house or rented hall to give or receive condolences. This is culture. This is not part of the deen. Four, gathering in the house of the deceased for seven days to recite Surah Al-Mulk. Five, getting together in a house or masjid and finishing the Quran, Quran Khani. Is yes, this Quran? Say Quran Khan here? Yes. Oh, good. Because everybody will know what this. Everybody get a bar, a bar, a bar, and everybody read, you understand? Okay. Six, limiting the days. Did the Prophet do it? He said it is not Sunnah, but is it Haram? Yes, because it's Bid'ah. Anything, anything, let me explain to you, my brother, okay? With all respect. Anything that you do it. Seek nearness to Allah is not recommended or understood by the Sahaba. It is bid'ah. وَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ One plus one equal to. Why some of the ulama, the big ulama, talking about fada'il al-a'mal? What is fada'il? Where is fada'il al-a'mal? Where is fada'il al-a'mal? It is extra. Extra, that means, so that means the ulama had reached a level of understanding in the deen of Allah, what can break this, bring you closer to Allah than the Prophet. So that means the Prophet had betrayed the message. That means the Prophet ﷺ did not tell us enough what to bring us closer to Allah. And if any Muslim reached this belief, it can take him out of the Islam. The Prophet ﷺ, Bil Mu'minina Ra'uf Rahim. He cared for us about everything. He wants us to be in Jannah. He wants us to have the best places. Did the Muslim finish, practice all the Sunnah to do something that is not Sunnah? Why we go to things that is not even recommended, not even known to the Sahaba, and we come to say the ulama? If a person is true alim, he will stick to the Sunnah. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ This was the claim. This was the claim. Number six, limiting the days of condolences to three. Oh, it used to be seven before, and 40, and a year, and... But anyway, it depends what country in. Seven, commemoration of the deceased 
on the 40th day and annually after his death. Millions of people do this one. A lot. It's a business, brother. It's a business because you're going to rent a hall, you're going to get a reciter. A lot of people benefit from these things. Number eight, the deceased's family making and offering food to other people on the first few days. Nine, wearing black or other specific clothes or colors for offering condolences. Continue. Various acts, mistakes. Number one, preventing women who are indisposed from attending the dying person or the dead body. Number two, the deceased's close relatives giving alms or paying to or praying or praying two rak'ats on the first night. Number three, giving to the poor the same types of food that the deceased liked. Four, reciting al-Fatiha and prompting others to recite it for the deceased soul immediately after death or whenever he is mentioned. Five, specifically giving alms for the soul of the dead in the months of Rajab, Sha'ban, and Ramadan. Washing the body, mistakes. Number one, moving the deceased hands and feet repeatedly and pressing on his or her stomach to expel all excrements. Number two, those conducting the washing, saying a specific dhikr for every part of the body that is being washed. Number three, the people present at the washing make a loud dhikr often collectively while the body is being washed. Number four, loudly reciting Yasin or other portions of the Qur'an during the washing and shrouding. Five, arranging a woman's hair in the middle of her body. Shrouding the body mistakes. Number one, using expensive shrouds and believing that the dead people boast about their shrouds. Number two, writing the deceased's name that he believes in the shahada or other things on a paper and putting it inside the shroud. Three, writing a supplication on the shroud. Four, using an additional small sheet to wrap the deceased private area unless necessary. Five, writing the kalima on the forehead of the body with perfume. Carrying the janazah, mistakes. Number one, adorning the janazah, i.e. prayer rugs, flowers, Quranic verses. Number two, walking slowly with measured steps to the graveyard. Number three, raising the voices with dhikr, Qur'anic recitation or poetry and prompting the people to seek forgiveness or recite al-Fatiha for the deceased. Number four, putting a turban, fez, crown or other form of head covers over the coffin to indicate the deceased's gender. Five, proceeding with preceding the janazah with flags, flowers, wreaths or, deceased's, or the deceased's picture. Six, slaughtering sheep at the doorstep after the janazah leaves the house, believing that it protects from more death. Seven, preceding the funeral with food to be distributed after the burial. Eight, believing that a good person's body feels light and moves fast. <coughs> Nine, giving alms and offering juice to those walking with the janazah. Ten, carrying the janazah for ten steps from each of the four corners. 11, crowding over the beer, and 12, talking about worldly affairs while following the janazah. The janazah prayer, mistakes. Number one, praying Salatul Ghaib for a person, although it is known that janazah prayer had already been performed for him. Number two, praying Salatul Ghaib every day after Maghrib for all the Muslims who died on that day. Number three, the imam standing near the middle of a man and by the chest of a woman. Four, taking off the shoes and standing over them during the prayer. Five, saying after the prayer, exalted be he who has subdued his slaves with death and exalted be the alive who does not die. Six, prompting the people after the prayer by asking them, what do you testify about him? So that they would reply, he was a good man. <coughs> Burial mistakes, section 1, before the burial. Digging one's grave prior to death. This was not done by the Prophet wasallam or his companions. One cannot foretell in which land he will die. 2. Slaughtering a calf upon arrival to the grave and distributing its meat over the people present. 
three, making dhikr around the beer before burying the body. Section two, mistakes during the burial. One, putting blood from the slaughtered animal in the grave. Number two, calling the adhan while lowering the body into the grave. Number three, lowering the body from the heads or the qibla side of the grave. Four, putting soil representative of Karbala in the grave. Five, placing a soft plush piece of velvet under the body in the grave. Six, spraying rose water over the body in the grave. Seven, throwing soil into the grave with the backs of the hands. Eight, saying specific dhikr while throwing each handful. Nine, reciting al-Fatiha by the deceased's head and the beginning of al-Baqarah by his feet, based upon a weak hadith. Section two, after the burial, mistakes. Number one, making talqeen, prompting with the shahada for the deceased in his grave. Placing two stones on a woman's grave. Number three, praising the deceased and lamenting over his grave after the burial, eulogies. Number four, putting food and drink over the grave to be taken by the poor. Number five, giving alms around the grave. Number six, pouring water over the grave. Number seven, raising and building the grave with marble and making upright tombstones. Number eight, painting or coloring the grave. Number nine, lighting a torch at the grave. 10. Writing Qur'an, dates, poetry, and other things on the tombstones. 11. Planting flowers, myrtle, and other plants on the grave or plant, placing green branches on it when it is visited. 12. Hanging the deceased picture on the tombstone. 13. A person standing up to deliver a speech after the burial. The admonitions that, the, that Allah's Messenger وسلم, gave were not in the form of speeches, were not his consistent practice, and he did not deliver them while standing. 14. Do not dismember the corpse. Visiting the grave mistakes, section 1, specific days and times. Number 1. Specific, specifically visiting the grave on the 3rd, 7th, 15th, and 14th days after the burial. Number two, specifically visiting the parents' graves every Friday based on a fabricated hadith. Three, specifically visiting the graves on the days of Eid and the day of Ashura and the middle of the night of Shaban. Four, specifically visiting the graves on Mondays and Thursdays. Five, specifically visiting the graves during the month of Rajab, Shaban, and Ramadan. Number six, specifically visiting some graves on the day of Arafah and crowding around them in large numbers in resemblance to what pilgrims do on the mountain of Arafah. Seven, visiting a deceased grave early on the morning following the burial in order to alleviate his loneliness. Number eight, sleeping a number of nights up to 40 by a deceased grave. Section two, unsubstantiated rituals. Number one, standing quietly by the gate of the cemetery as if asking permission to enter. Two, standing near the grave with hands on the chest as if in prayer. Three, performing tayammum upon reaching the graves. Four, reversing the salam by saying alaykum as salam instead of as salamu alaykum to the dead based upon a misinterpreted hadith in this regard. Five, giving ad admonishment in the graveyards during night, during nights with a full moon. Six, raising the voice among the graves with la ilaha illallah or other forms of dhikr. Seven, seeking help from the dead person or asking him to supplicate for the visitors. Eight, visiting the grave for the purpose of supplication and believing that the supplications are more acceptable there. 9. Slaughtering and sacrificing animals by the grave. 10. Sitting on the grave. Section 3. Praying and reciting Qur'an. Mistakes. Number 1. Starting the visit with praying two rak'at, reading in them Al-Fatiha, Ayat Al-Kursi, and Surah Al-Ikhlas, and offering the prayers, blessings to the deceased. 2. Reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas or Yasin over the graves based on fabricated hadiths. 
as was indicated earlier. Number three, paying someone to recite Qur'an over a grave and offering the reward of the recitation to the deceased. Four, offering <coughs> the blessings of one's act of worship like prayer and Qur'anic recitation to the dead Muslims. Number five, taking mushafs to the graveyards to read from them or placing them on the graves for others to read. Six, praying in the direction of the grave. Seven, praying near the grave. Section four, the, the prophets and righteous. Number one, traveling specifically to visit the graves of the prophets and other righteous people. Two, asking the visitors of the graves of the prophets or other righteous people to convey their salams to them. Three, calling the visitors of the graves of the prophets or some righteous people pilgrims. Four, touching and kissing the graves of the prophets and other righteous people. Five, making tawaf around the grave of the prophets and other righteous people. Seven, visiting Yahya alayhi salam's tomb in the Umawi mosque in Damascus on Saturday mornings and believing that doing that 40 times is a means of atonement. Eight, believing that the supplications are acceptable by the graves of the prophets and other righteous people. Nine, putting curtains around the prophets or righteous people's graves. Ten, believing that sustenance and victory are granted to a town because it has the grave of a specific righteous person in it. Special issues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So ask those who know the scripture if you know not. Frequently asked questions. Number one, can a woman visit sick men? Number two, is it okay to visit a dying non-Muslim? Number three, severed body parts. Number four, Salatul Janazah for the aborted and the miscarried. All right. Uh, with these questions, inshallah, uh, a woman uh, visiting a sick man that is not mahram for her, that if she company, you understand, by her husband or something like a mahram, it may be, it be acceptable. And uh, other than this, not to do, unless that there is a matter of a necessity to be done. Uh, number two, about a Muslim visiting non-Muslims, okay, who is sick, is fine, but especially those who did that you purpose of da'wah, okay, purpose of da'wah that you may give him the shahada before dying. Uh, Body parts, like uh, you talking about what donating? Severed, cut off. <clears throat> cut off body parts. If the the body part been separated or is not, uh, for whatever reason that is supposed to be bought with the body in the in the in the coffin or in the shroud and to be bought in the to be buried. Salat al Janazah for uh, a person that already uh, been pray on it. Salat al Ghaib is not. Aborted abortion. No, uh, a, per a person that uh, miscarriage, it can be, but we said that even the Prophet, وسلم, when his son Ibrahim, he was about 17 months old, approximately, when he died and he didn't pray on the Janazah. But in another narration, we see that the Prophet وسلم, said to be performing the Janazah and to make dua for the parents. Okay? So it's understood from this that it can be done if it's done. Uh, basically, if anybody have any question, we can discuss it, but I would like at least to take some time to do demonstrate certain things about uh, washing or shrouding before the time, inshallah, that... Uh, does anybody have a question before we go to this uh, amali or what you call, uh, like, workshop or what do you want to call it? Demonstrating? Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Tazkira al-ahya wa dua lil-mayit. هي تذكرها للحي والدعاء للميت هذا صحيح 
لا اعلم هذه أشياء لا يعني لا أستطيع أن أجزم بها إلا إذا في دليل. هذا الله أعلم. I say Allah knows best. Uh, if nothing that I have from Quran or authentic Sunnah or the practice of the Sahaba that I could not say there is a beneficial for the deceased person. But the dua is a, and like he said that we can make the dua any place. Yes, this is true. But sending the salam and making the dua is something beneficial for them, regardless you do it at your home or you did it there. But it is, this was the Prophet وسلم, said, and Allah knows best. All right. As for demonstration, for Can somebody recommend it for me? What part actually that you want to see in demonstration? Uh, I would like to see the, how you put the clothes. Okay. The brother want to see about the... <laughs> Maybe we'll put this. Okay. Yes. Inshallah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure that I said this is some of the stuff here that we're supposed to be using. Scissors. How you cut a pants, as example, that is so tight in the person. So you can remove it. You cut the pants from the side. Okay? You cut the pants from the side, not from the middle. You go here and you cut it this way and this way, and now it became two pieces. You pull it back and forth. This one thing. The person has to be totally, everything to be removed from the body. So when the person dies, I will take a sheet and fully cover the person. <coughs> Don't worry. Don't, not a bit scared. Okay? Yeah. This is the person how to be left until you're ready to prepare the genesis. Okay? Now, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think this is came from uh, India or Pakistan. <laughs> now, when the person that I'm going to wash him, can I cut a piece of this? Yeah, you got a scissor? this way but the Egyptian way to make things fast and quick and it comes handy. Okay. The international way. International? I'm sorry brother, I thought that is but invented in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> now when I'm watching the person, okay, this is supposed to be the way that the person is covered. Okay? This is for a man. The woman, same thing here, 
what is there, you understand the cover in this, all right? So when I wash, I have the gloves, and I'm washing with under, okay? With the, this cover on it. It should be a heavy little bit like a towel, because it will have more uh, weight, weight that stay on the body, you understand, and remove it. People who assist me, they got to be standing this way or that this way for whatever I need, or they have a hose and they bring in the water, but you need assistance. Uh, we, we do the right side first. Yeah, we got to do the right side, of course. Uh, what else I want to tell you about the washing? Yes, we start with the private parts, okay? With so it is covered here. Okay. Okay. So now somebody pouring the water or holding the hose for me. I have my gloves and I start with the private parts, okay? From under and everything, okay? This is the first thing. You should change the gloves, okay, because you're going to touch his face or all these things, all right? This is the first thing. And after this, I start with the wudu. And the hands and the arm will be a little bit tense, but it can. Somebody pour it, and you're in, you make the intention for him that you wash him, okay? Hands, the hands, I understand. And after this, I start with the mouth, nose. You do not pour water inside but a little bit with, over the lips or between the lips and the nose. And you wash your hands and you go over the face, washing it, okay? And after this, the right to the elbow. Same thing, the left to the elbow, all right? And after this, you wash your hands, you go over the head and the ears, and we leave this for later. If you wash it, it's okay, but we go on according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now we start after this, that I'm going, the person will be pouring the water, okay? And I wash the head, the neck, okay? And we'll come on the right side. Okay. In normal cases, there is nothing. But if it's say you're saying that I'm going to put my hand like this, as example, lift him up a little bit like this, and with my left hand, I'm pushing it on against him, okay? And I clean it again, and I clean it again, okay? Yes. If it's still coming, I maybe use cotton or anything like this. You, oh, the left. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't come back to life. <laughs> okay? Uh, you can, you understand, stuff it or something like this, or let it go and wash it, wash it until in the end, when I'm going to put it on the kefen, now I can put some cotton. But this, like I say, doesn't always have it to be heavy. You got it? You don't so have to repeat the wudu again, right? When you no, no, no. The wudu, you do it for the first. Yes. The private parts first, and after this wudu, <laughs> without the feet, and after this the washing of the head, and the right side, the left side, okay? Front and back, okay? Now, what you have the UD, you give the hand, do you do it after the wudu or before the wudu? What he means that cleaning is the stomach. Uh -huh. Before the wudu or after the wudu? Now, if, if we do not have anything happening, we give wudu. We give private parts washing, okay? And we make a wudu and we start the ghusl. But if there is something coming, now this is the time I'm going to start to understand to do. And we leave it the, for him. You repeat the wudu again? You repeat the wudu again, okay? Now we wash the right side, the left side, and the last thing that I'm going to wash the feet. In some places, I can understand you go about trimming, uh, cutting the fingernail, trimming the mustache, and no, you don't even do these things, okay? Don't do these things, okay? You, as a Muslim, is supposed to be also in hygiene at all times, and there is a period, but it's not a person for you to cut anything from the person, all right? The difference will be with the woman that will go to braid her hair, all right? Three braids, all right? 
The last washing is going to have the kafrun in it. So the first and the second, okay, is going to be a means of cleanliness, okay? And the last one will be washing and also giving this good smell for the body. Yes, ma'am. Uh, as for the manicure or the nail polish, we would remove it because you could not make wudu or ghusl with manicure. But as for the cutting the fingernails, we did not do this. <laughs> this is their problem now. They, they, they are not the okay? But because the washing itself needs to be done on the surface itself, and the nail polish it prevents the water to reach. So this we have to do, okay? So after we wash everything, now you understand we should have another table prepared. You should have two tables, one that you wash it. One thing also I advise you is that when you wash it, okay, that you lift up. Do you mind to get down for a minute? And Back to back. life. <laughs> Come alive again. That you see the table that you wash it, because it's not a professional table, that you need two bricks and you put it under the feet. Yeah. You see here, one here, and one here. So now, the water flows now. What be flowing, you understand, not to be missing up your clothes and all these things. You want to come back again? Okay. Now we're going to take him, all right? One thing that, you know this. Now the two brothers from this side, they're going to come and get him this way in the same time because the body sometimes is stiff, okay, and will be too much. So you come here, okay, and the other two people and lead to the other side, okay? And after this, the other side, okay? And you wash the back also, okay? To, let's say, this is the details, but let's assume that we are not well acquainted with this. If I cover the whole body with water is still sufficient and I have fulfilled my... <laughs> if you wash the whole body, okay, that you have fulfilled your obligation toward the person. But we should try to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah in everything, the cleaning, the private parts, the wudu, and the washing. Now we're going to dry and we're getting carrying the person in Another table. Yusuf? Yusuf, is it? Okay. Now, Yusuf, let's get up and help me here. Now, the show, I'm going to have the other table, and we got both the, the kafal itself on the table. All right? <coughs> Before you put the kafal, get me the scissors, please. What did you call it? International? Way? What, how did, what did he say? When I say Egyptian way, he said no, it's what? It's the international way. Okay. Now we're going to make ribat or arbeta about maybe one inch, okay? And another one. And you can continue. I don't want to waste the sheet, okay? But it gives you something like this, okay? as a tie, and this will be the first thing that you lay down in the table, okay, because this is, you got to tie the kafan with it, so you have the last thing that you got, so you got to have this first, you lay down in the table like this, okay, like this, and another one like this, okay, now we get the sheet, And I'm going to lay down the sheet on top of the tiles here. Okay? This is one. Lay down all the way. And about maybe one foot is going to be dragging from here, and another foot dragging from here. Okay? 
Now I bring the second sheet and put it on top of this. And the third sheet and put it on top of the second one. So how many sheets I have here? Three. three. What under the three? Two. Uh, three, or, three or four uh, types. Yes, okay. And we lay down here the dead body after we dry the body and we bring them in a large uh, table with the sheets, everything is there. Now the person will be here in the middle. Okay, go ahead, Yusuf. So, Sheikh Abdi, there is no requirements for the measurement. What you say is that depending on the size of the parcel, you will pick the measure. Caesar underneath. Yeah. Oh, this. What's this? The Caesar. Caesar and the microphone. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Now this is. Yes, sir. Yeah. Like I said, you understand. The size of the parcel. This. Okay. We're going to see it now. Can you imagine somebody? We have to take in consideration that you're going to be carrying this. Okay? So if you have a big man like me as a dummy, okay? <laughs> see? So you don't want to be carrying on after this thing exposed. We have to be worried about the person not to be exposed, male or female. But now we have the person laying down like this. One thing to make it easy in you is that you make a difference in the sheets when you lay down in the bed. Make them one a distance from the other one, a little bit, about one inch, will make it easy for you that you found the first sheet or the second sheet, okay? Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Anybody doesn't understand? So, this is the first one, so the second one will be on top of it, but what? An inch. Like an inch, the other side. And the number three, you understand, sisters? So you can see this. So it will be much easier for you when you pick it up, you have the first one, the second one, the third one. I take the first one and I go. Okay? Close your eyes if you want, if you're scared. Alright? And you come down with the other side. Okay. See, you barely can get it. Alright. The second sheet. No. The third sheet. Go on again. Okay? And now I come here. Okay? And I'm going to tie. Alright? And here to tie. Here, this will be, you see, like also a tie here. And a tie here also. So like this is what I said, that you will leave about one foot under it, okay? We'll cut another tie here. Okay? Tying. Okay, this is one. Are you breathing? Yeah, yeah. Are you still there? I like the <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Tie. <laughs> and now you make fionke. What you call it? Okay? In a way that when you come to open it, you just pull it. What you need to pull it. Okay? You don't understand Thai? It's <laughs> tight by itself. <laughs> so all this is okay. Can you imagine that you're doing a real genesis now and you have... Because the material itself, okay? So, so we have one. Sure. Don't make a knot over it. Make it in a way that you can pull it and after this you can open it. Okay? But the same time will be secure and you come, pull it. Okay? Why are you going to do that? Why? Very good. Because when you put him in the grave, this only to secure the body not to be exposed while I'm carrying it. When I put him in the grave, you're going to untie all the ties. This also. You understand? Okay? And you put it in a way, okay? And you have the one here, the three sheets, okay? 
three, if you need more, you understand five, there's no problem. Remind me what else you want to know. I'm sorry. Okay, I just want to tell you about the hands. Huh? About the hands? Yes. This is the hand. Okay? If it worked, alhamdulillah, if it didn't work. If it doesn't work, work <coughs> one time it happened, we couldn't pull the hand. Yeah. You could not pull the hand? No. Even if you put it like this and you tie it together? Well, yeah, we tie it together. Okay. But if not, don't, don't, it does not have to be. Okay? But the main thing is that the body is covered properly and to make sure is that there is no chance of being exposed when you carry from table to table or you take it in the grave, all the things, this movement. So this is the reason I'm saying get something that will be sufficient that will cover this. This is supposed to be coming this way. Okay? You remind me guys about anything that are supposed to... Now, when I put him in the grave, if this is the Qibla here, okay? So, Allah is the other side. Okay? So I will load him to the grave from this way. This is the Qibla. You're going to load him laying down on the back. Now when you go down, now after you lay him down like this, now you want to <coughs> Don't miss it out under you. Okay. Now I took him down like this with that, taking him to the grave. Alright? But now when he's in the grave already, now I put him inside the lahat, and now this is the way how it's going to be, and this is the time you understand. And also, both the ties to the side. So it will be a matter not to be scratching and looking for it. It will be on the side. You can pull it this way, go this way. And this is the way how it's going to be. And after this, I will come here because he's inside now. So I will come here and build. Put these bricks, one beside the each other, and close any gaps between them. And after this, he can pull the dirt. So actually, the dirt doesn't fall on the deceased person. If falling, can you move back a little bit in your side? You see, he's in the lahd now like this. He's in the lahd. Okay? And all these bricks. So here is the, where is that? Dirt will come. Everything will come this way. Apart from the bricks, you can also use wood, right? They use wood and then they, they use mud and cover it up. Except the any question? Anything that I oh, wow. help me about, after remind ghusl, me or ask me something? After ghusl on the fifth table, uh, would be dried by a towel or something like that? The, yes, you dry the bed because you could not put him in the... It will make the coffin wet. Okay, you see? And before that's even you transport say, yeah, him okay. there, you try to dry him as much as possible. And you bring him back and dry and all these things. So when you go there, it's not going to be wet. Can we use dryer? Dryer? <laughs> you are giving heat to the body. You yes. try to avoid that kind of thing. So. No, no, we're, we're cold dryer. Have you ever used a cold dryer for yourself? That's a question. سوري <laughs> لا أظن أنا ما بقول إن أنا أعرف الإمتى عسبين ولكن يعني الإنسان بيسمع من هذا ويسمع من هذا ويقرأ لهذا ويقرأ لهذا ولكن الرسول يتكلم في العموم اللحن لنا والشق لهم فهذه مخالفة أهل الكتاب حي أو ميت أي كوشن فضل you 
It happened one time that his, uh, his brother, she came from the hospital. Uh, he was on the intensive care. What happened is that the Rashtra body at the night time, uh, the hospital, what they did is that they didn't take out all the, you know, sometimes you have catheter and the pipes and everything. So it was taken out. Is it, you, know, you have to take out everything. Aki, if anything that you're going to pull it out of the body, you the medical care or yes. anything, it's going to bring about more yes. blood and more things like this, you yes. cut it closer as much as you can, put a tape on it and leave it. Okay? okay? Because sometimes, understand, you yes. don't know how much you're going to be dealing. Plus, we don't want to understand too. Yeah, it can be some disease and things like this. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. Excuse me, please, so I can hear the brother there. Please, please. Yes, sir. You transfer the body and then you put it back on the sheets. You leave the sheet on there covering the aura and then you pull the sheet over the other sheet. At all times, when you're processing the washing and moving to the other table and putting, you don't pull this towel. You may take the wet towel and replace it with a dry towel at the same time that you put one like this and you pull the other one out, okay? And after this you put him there, still you don't pull this unless that you put something in the hand and you, after this. Under no case, under no condition, the private parts of the dead person to be exposed or be touched. It means that you take the towel after you put the first layer, you put it. Exactly. And when he was washing and drying, now you, you have, you can get with a clean, dry towel, and you can pull it up like this, and you pull the other one, and you put the clean one. You do the best you can. There is three sheets, right? Three sheets? Three sheets? Three sheets. One of them, one of them is the kamis, the right kamis? No, 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 no. Kamis and duna, imama, and all the things. This is not. This what we did, this is the sunnah, this is the way how it is. No, there is no comment, it's nothing. Equal sheet. That was wrong. Okay. That was, crime is gone. Yeah, okay. That was time of diarrhea. Shit, I have a question. <laughs> there was a, if there is action, there was a case that somebody died in a car accident and the body was in two parts. It's cut completely. And uh, so how do we deal with that? Okay, like I said, the blood, contagion disease, anything, Put in a bag, make tayammum over the bag, and this is it. Okay, my Do not go and mess up, you understand everything, and take the pieces, and no, 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 no. no. So Get it in. We can put in the plastic, you know, they bury the bag, you know, the plastic yes, bag. Sir. Yes, sir. And yes. they do tayammum on it. Yes, sir. Or something like that. Second thing. Yes. yes. This question came that somebody was amputated, and his leg, some patient was in the hospital, and his leg was amputated, so... What it was the body? No, no, he's alive. Person is alive, but his legs were amputated because he was diabetic. You bury it. What do we do with that leg? You take it to the graveyard and bury it. Bury just uh, no wrapping, nothing. No, doesn't matter. You wrap it, you don't wrap it. I don't know any details about it, but you did not go through it in the no, trash or give it to the poor. Just bury it. Yeah, you bury it. You bury it. Yes, ma'am. It's not what is the condition about the people about uh, organ donors. The respect and the honor of the body of uh, the Muslim while he's alive is what he was dead. So I don't advise that you be part of this. Okay? Plus, emulation and exposing the body and all these things is not for you to participate in something like this. Allah. Dentures. There is a hadith, Kasr Azmil Mu'min Hayyan Ka Kasri Mayyitan Ka Kasri Hayyan. Something in this meaning. That breaking the bone of a dead Muslim is equal to breaking the, his bones while he's alive. Yes. Uh, Inshallah, like I said, I did my best does not mean that everything I said was 100%, but I advise you that you read books and you try to find things more related to the issue and try to educate yourself about it. And I'm sure there is a lot on the internet that you can
but be careful from things that is not supported by Quran and Sunnah, okay? So try to select where do you go to get more information. And like I said, this book, Ahkam al Janaza, okay, will be one of the best books that you can read. And if I'm not mistaken, that it is in English, it's in Arabic, and I think it's in Urdu also. By who? Sheikh Al Bani. Sheikh Al Bani. Muhammad Nasir Dil Al Bani. Allah said, Mercy in his soul. Any other question? Please forgive me for my short comment. And uh, by the way, I think I think I have a demonstration part of video tapes on YouTube or Google about Janaza, and I have lectures there. I have a what you call this a site on what in YouTube, okay, that you can visit Muhammad Adli, okay, the official site of Muhammad Adli on YouTube. It talks about janazah and talks about demonstration of things like salah and many things, but you have at least 2,000 segments there. So if you try to make the get a segment once a week, it, inshallah, you will get some knowledge. I'm not saying that you don't have the knowledge, but it will increase your knowledge, inshallah, and give you something that I try my best to make sure is authentic and is correct before you read. So this will be easier. If you found something for Sheikh Al Albani, Sheikh Ibn Al Thamim, Salih Ibn Najid, all these people, inshallah, is reliable and you can take from them, inshallah. Zakumullah khairan. May Allah reward you for your patience. You did very good. Although that we delay you only for 55 minutes, we're supposed to close at 3, but it's 4 o'clock now. But I can go and. I'll be back here for after Malibu or after Aisha. Okay, what do you want to